Hey everyone, and welcome to part 17 of Let's Clone a Pokemon Game. So, in this tutorial, we're going to be going over how to actually save our game data. So, we're just going to be saving something basic, just to start off with. So, we're going to be saving our player's position in the game. So, each time we exit out and we load back into our game, we actually want to save that data, if you decide to save your game, actually. And so, if you're walking from one place to another, you and you save your game, you want it to remember your player's position, what type of monsters you have, everything like that. Every little piece of information that we can change in the game that may affect our player, we do want to save it and make it so when the player loads back into the game that they still have their save data. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over just the basics of how to set up a save system to where it saves the player's position to when we load out of Unity and back in it will currently save our position wherever we're at in the game. So later on we'll go into other variables of saving like our, our arrays and stuff like that. And yeah, so the first thing you're going to want to do is actually create a new script, create a JavaScript for a save system. And this is what we're going to be using for saving our all our variables. And now you could save this pretty much anywhere you want in your game since we're going to be using player prefs, which is pretty much just a built-in function for saving different pieces of data um, within the Unity Editor itself. So we're just going to open this up and you want to have your save system open. Now you can pretty much erase everything that's in here except the start function and you're going to want to add two different functions to, as well which is going to be the load. So when we actually start up our game we're going to call the load function and this will load up all our data that we previously had. So if we save something like a position we want to load that up at the beginning of the game just once just so we can keep track of that. And then we also have our save function. So what this will do is save all our data that we want to save when we call it. So when we press down a button it will call this function in the script and actually save everything. So you can pretty much think of player prefs as a variable, but the only difference between this and a normal variable is this can be saved. So each uh, each variable that you have has to be saved within a player prefs, and that way we can access it later if you do want to save that variable. So if you're creating a game where you actually want the player to be able to save, you want to set this up for each variable that you have and load it as well. So. I'm going to go through everything in here real quick and then we can jump over to our pause menu and edit that a little bit. So for one we want a variable player game object. This is what we're going to be using for actually accessing our player itself and finding out what position our player is at and also applying a position once we load back in. Now what I could have done is just dragged and dropped um, my in-game object onto here or in the inspector but instead I just decided to do player equals game object dot find player and what this will do is just assign our player to this player so it's nothing too fancy um, it's just a different way of doing it and then load so the start function whenever our game immediately starts it'll al always call the start function in each script so these are the first things being called and when we start that up we want it to load so we wanted to load our stuff. Now you'll probably be asking um, why we have this here. So if it's your first time actually loading into your game, like it's a brand new game, no one's played it before, you want to actually check to make sure there's variables saved in there. If there's no variables saved within this, then or no number that's been applied, then we do not want to load this. It's not something that we want to load. So if that is equal to null, it just means nothing's in there. We want to grab our player dot transform dot position dot x, y, and z. So these are the three positions that our player is currently at, and we'll be storing those in player prefs. Or this is for loading, so this is actually grabbing each of those variables. So this is where you actually name the variable itself in your player prefs and this is going to be for setting it and getting it. And so, yeah, this is basics. I should have probably went over this first for actual save. So, 
declarePrefs.setFloat. Now this is the way we're going to actually assign something to that variable that we create. And this is where you're going to create it. So this is a completely different thing than your actual variable that you're going to be grabbing. Think of this as a brand new variable that we may be naming. And you can name these whatever you want to keep track of. But when you set it, you want you can either grab a a variable that exists in the game. So if, so for this, we're actually describing the player's position position, but if you had it set in a like an int variable or a float variable, that's probably another thing I should go over. Um, each of these is different, so set float would be a float, set int would be an int, and so on. So there's a bunch of different functions you can call using that. But for this, we're just applying our player's position dot x to our player x. And we're doing these for each one, for each position. And so since this is set float, it means we're setting this number to something. And we actually, when we actually want to grab it, we want to do player prefs dot get float. So we're grabbing it and we're applying it to this. So it may be a little bit confusing at first, but trust me, it's not too difficult to figure out. You're just getting and setting different things. You're just using extra variables within player prefs. And so we're going to go to our pause menu. I haven't changed this up yet. Um, someone did suggest a better way of doing all of this, and I'll go over that very soon here. So none of this is going to get changed up just yet. But yeah, the only thing that I added to my on GUI is this little statement here. And this is just for being able to actually access our save system, because we want to be able to access the, the actual save function. So we'll just use plug this in, and then we want to do other.save. So what this will do is when we press that button, it'll actually call the save function, which will save our game. So now we can actually go back in here, and I'll show you guys how this works. So let's say I'm just walking along, and I want to you know, exit my game. I'm ready to exit. I'm done playing. I can press P and click on save. Now we could have some animation or something showing that the game actually saved but I guess we can go over that sometime later. But we can exit this and remember we're somewhere over here. This is where we originally start off with or where we usually would. So when we hit play you can see our player saved in the same position. And we'll walk over here to this corner. We'll exit out you can see our player is still over here. But as soon as it... Oh, that's one thing I forgot to do. Alright, we'll walk back there. Totally forgot to save it. Save. And now we'll exit the game. Now we'll go back in. And you see our player is saved here. Now, like I said before, you can do this with any type of variable. And we'll be going over that in a later date. So hopefully I can get some more tutorials out soon. This month has been... Or, let's say the previous month and this month have been uh, very busy with work and stuff at Activision. So hopefully I will get some more time to make some tutorials for, for you guys. I'll start uh, coming up with some new ones here soon, but here's just one for people who want to know about the save system. So yeah, guys, uh, stay tuned and for the next tutorial.